Welcome to Chief Miller. Chief Miller operates the largest social media page dedicated to the men and women of the fire service from around the world. Check him out on Instagram at Chief underscore Miller. Find him on Twitter at Chief underscore Miller. And check out the website where you can find Chief Miller Apparel at ChiefMillerApparel.com. You're listening to Views from the Jump Seat Podcast. Bunker up. Buckle in. It's time for the show to begin. One thing remains constant in the fire service is that we start day one in the jump seat. So if you're a chief officer, welcome back. If you're the day one probationary, welcome aboard. It's time for Jump Seat Radio. The recording. Oh, now we got to start all over again. Well, hell <laughs> Well, welcome back, everyone. We started this podcast. We had a great conversation going, and Ryan forgot to hit the record podcast. All right, Pip, say what you're saying again. So, to context again, take two, <laughs> is that we were having this great discussion before I hit record. Number one, I'm still in New Jersey. We're still in the pit pad. Ooh. We're going to work out we're soon. Work it's out. getting closer uh, to the workout. Ryan keeps uh, talking to try to avoid the workout. But we were talking about fantasy and reality. We're both big, huge social media folks. We both enjoy it. But that's a highlight reel. And you had to come to Jesus moment just like I did when it came to, hey, I'm missing Allison growing up. Yeah. I mean, a few years back and, and I, how this started was we were, we were talking about priorities and we were talking about, you know, that social media versus real life and, and just things for ourselves. And I had said to Ryan, you know, one, one thing that I do – a lot of, and I don't do it well as I write things down, but I write them in like 12 different notebooks. They're strewn throughout my life. And then uh, I forget what I write down and where I wrote it. But, you know, I said to him, you, you can go back into a few of my notebooks and it literally on every page for a brief stint there, it said, be present. And that came down to one day, uh, Mrs. Pip and I were, I guess, getting into it about whatever we get into it about, because that's what married couples do. If you're married and don't fight, you're basically lying about everything or not really in a true marriage because you're never going to, it's not all roses and daisies. It's, It's a work. But, you know, she told me like, you need to be present. Like when you're here at home, you need to be present for me, for your two little boys, for your dog. And, you know, I'm from New Jersey. So I kind of gave her like a, what the F like I'm here. Don't you see me? I'm standing here right now. I'm present. And she broke it down even further with, you know, taking text messages, answering social media messages, taking calls where they're business calls. And, you know, I don't have banker hours, you know, I never have. And what I started to slowly realize was she was right. I was not always as let me present. Guess. Let, me, let me figure this out. Your wife was right. And I said it. I said it. And people around the world are going to hear it. She was right like that time. And when she met me and decided to get married to me, she was right that time too. Which is, which was September the thirtieth, two thousand six. I see. <laughs> yes. But as much as we don't like to admit it, our wife is usually right more often than more not. More often than not, they are. But the being present needs to go deep in your soul, deep in my soul, and it's something that. When Heather told me, he's like, yeah, you know that part-time job you have of educating firefighters? Yeah. You don't have that anymore. Uh, Excuse me? She's like, yeah, you're gone too much. And it's like, okay, I'm fine. I'm staying home. Yeah. You, you, it, well, no, you weren't like, okay, I'm fine. I'm staying home. At that time I probably was because 2015, I overdid it. Yeah. Well, then you knew though, you knew she was right for sure. And, And that's a big part too, is when you start to realize like you, you, you have to be present. And listen, I love you guys who follow me on social media. You know, I try, I try my hardest to capture as much as I can about my life and, and keeping it as real as possible. You know, that's why if you follow, follow me on Instagram, you see the on for 24 post, which I don't always do because I'll forget because I forget more than I remember. <laughs> but like, it's to prove that I, I go to work. Well, and you're being present. And I'm being present at work. Oh, that's a, a big deal. And so g- go back to the fight there with Mrs. Pip a little bit about, you know, me and and her and the boys. And she asked me if I was that way at work. And listen, I'm not going to lie. Sure. 
I'll answer the phone at work and, and talk to firefighters from around the country and, and if I get a chance. But I am, even since that conversation at work, I am present. Um, just recently, here, we'll do a shout out to our friend Jeremy from National Fire Radio. This is Jeremy from National... I can't do the... You can't do, do it. Jeremy from National Fire Radio here with the brothers in Allentown. But I was uh, listening to one of the National Fire Radio podcasts with uh, Jared Von Eck uh, from Spartanburg, South Carolina, former Jersey boy. And he was even talking about, you know, being present at the firehouse. And, and afterwards, Jared and I started uh, a conversation on the phone because he shouted out 555 and I wanted to thank him for it. And I was telling him how, you know... Um, when, when I go to work, when I work my 24, I work a 24 72. When I walk in that door, I get, if we start at eight, I show up at about seven 20. Cause that's me. I right. like to I have a routine. I'll have to do it. And plus I beat the traffic. But for those 24 hours, I'm a fire Lieutenant on engine one. Um, that is my main priority. That is my be present. Then when I'm done the next day at 8 AM and I have my decompression ride home, I walk in this door and I'm dad, right? I'm Tracy's husband, you know, I think that's it, it took it took someone smacking me in the face with that one because I, I mean, let's just face it. I'm addicted to my phone. I'm going through counseling right now to get away from my addiction to my phone because I'm the type of person that feeds off others. Yes. And, I mean, that that's just who Ryan is. And I've come to embrace that. But we were in Columbia, Missouri at a great and in, in Columbia, Missouri, Winter Fire School, we need to get you out there. You'll have to come out in 2020 because they've already set the 2019 schedule. I'm small. Maybe <laughs> they won't notice I'm there. <laughs> but they put on this feed for the instructors. So, I mean, I'm going to name drop here. So, you got Chief Norman and you've got, I mean, just you name the who's who's. And there's Chief Isaacson. And I'm thinking like, all right, I look up to this cat right here. I'm like, what's up, Kurt? What's up, Ryan? Blah, 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 blah. He sits down away from the hoopla, away from his, his Pensacola, Florida groove and he's just this you can see the soul of a fire chief that absolutely effing gets it and i mean he starts talking he's like ryan he's like i'm super fortunate to do what i do to travel around and teach like i do number one people listen to me and we we're talking about frequent flyer he says well i don't care about frequent flyer miles my goal is i'm getting home i don't care if it's a cab an uber a united flight a delta flight it's like, I need to maximize my presence and my family. And then he comes back and says, when I'm in, sh in, my, when I'm in the buggy as a chief in Escambia, Florida, I don't answer my personal cell phone. And I was like, oh, chief, you're killing me. How do you survive? Oh. And I mean, that kind of smacked me in the face. And it was like, that man gets it. Yeah. I mean, you... you, you you have to be present in what you're doing. I mean, in, in, in everything you do in life, whether it's, right. it's your job, your family, a workout, you know, sure. you, you have to be there. And all too often now with these distractions, like your phone, my computer's open right now to a Facebook feed. Ryan's looking at his phone while I'm talking. I could literally have six different devices open that are sitting in my office right, right now. Or I could be present with Ryan in this podcast and be sharing knowledge and uh, I don't even do we share knowledge sharing our opinions let's say right. I think these are more of know. our opinions I think you and I've got a pretty pretty good interaction here like that so how do you get away from it you slap yourself in the face and say I have to well I'm you know a... you, you have to self-discipline oh. another big word oh. and I guess we can fanboy back to our boy Jocko <laughs> there but you know it does equal freedom and, <laughs> so they say so they say the book the book is right below me, actually, right here. Right. Discipline equals freedom. But, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, self-discipline is big. And when you mm. have kids, so I have two little boys, mm. for those of you who don't know, eight and five, and I am their disciplinarian. Mm. As much as I am their best friend, there's right. times where you have to be dad or mom, and you see the failure of the parent that is their friend and not their disciplinarian. You can't be friend first. You have to be parent first. Right. And it is hard. And sometimes you want to laugh, especially at the five-year-old when I'm disciplining him and he makes me laugh and I try not to smirk. This is Pip but, again. Yeah, this is Pip, uh, Finnegan. It's Finnegan. 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 That's the older Finnegan. one. That's what it was. But, you know, with, with those guys, you know, you, you have to be there. And that discipline, they need that. And I need that. You know, and Mrs. Pip, you, oh, I can't say she's my disciplinarian because that sounds <laughs> like a whole different podcast, <laughs> a whole different thing. But, you know, it, it's, I guess as adults, we keep ourselves disciplined. Partner. Yeah. Accountability partner. Someone to keep you in check. Well, you know, and that's why when, when you get married, 
you, you have a partner, right? right? You're making a partnership. And again, I, I, I think I said it on this one. I get confused, but like, it's not all roses and, and daisies and not right. all, you know, if, if uh, some butts were candies yeah. and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Yeah. Ooh. That's too. white doves. <laughs> and you know, there's not rose petals on the floor, maybe occasionally, but you know, it's cause you're in a partnership mm -hmm. and having kids also stresses that partnership, right? Because that is all right. Whew. So now who's your work wife? <laughs> There's too many. Oh, there's, but but I, I'm uh, being serious. No, you are. Man. There, there's too many it for is, me. Is is it is is that work wife is going to be your accountability partner at work? Yeah, they're going to call mean, you my, out. My wife calls me out all the time. Ryan, put your phone down. You're addicted to your phone. Mm -hmm. Ryan, put your phone down. Addicted to your phone. Now that she's gotten promoted, it's kind of been flipped the script because I mean, I'm like, oh hey, uh, what do you got in your hand there, Heather? <laughs> why, why do you have two cell phones, Mrs. Yeah, Pip? Right? I see you with two cell yeah. phones. You're off today. <laughs> but. That's part of the marriage at work. Yes, sir. Who's it's your work. accountability partner? Because in my station, I notice that if one of us is not doing it, we will all fall into the pit. Oh my God! Oh, does that happen in your station too? If yeah. one if one person does something, everyone else does it. And, and if I and if I pick up my cell phone, guess what? There's another cell phone. There's another cell phone. There's another phone. Sounds and it's something I'm working on. I'm bad. I'm probably the worst about it, because I have the luxury of traveling to New Jersey. Traveling to Nashville, traveling to San Diego, and I meet some awesome people. Yep. Awesome people that I feed off of and, and, and I talk to. I mean, I even noticed the other day that I was texting somebody, um, I don't even know where they're from, at the dinner table at work. And I was like, oh. Such, such a try. And, and you see this when you speak firefighters and you speak kitchen table and go back to, to, to Jeremy, National Fire Radio. I can't just say his name. I, I have to I say. I Jersey accent. This is Jim in Jeremy, National, Fire, National Radio. Fire Radio. But you go back to him. They were talking about that kitchen table. And, you know, cell phones at the kitchen table. Should not be allowed. I, I, listen, man, I'm not your dad. And I'm right. not going to be like, put your cell phone away. Right. You know what I mean? And if Somebody my kids. if my, the other day to me. My kids call while reading. I'm going to get up and leave the table and go right. talk to my kids because that's right. a different story. But, like, I'm not texting Ryan from the kitchen table. You know, and, and, again, I'm very blessed like Ryan to have this. You know, he asked my work wife, like, there's a there's a firehouse work wife. There's a 555 work wife. There's a brute force work wife. There's I want Zog. Like, I want Zog. Zog's a good work wife. But except when you talk to him, he's like, hey, bro. I'm at the beach right yeah, now. And I'm like, Can I, get back I hate you. Going surfing. It's in New Jersey. I mean, no, he doesn't surf, believe it or not. What? Or he's not very good at it. No. Did I say that out loud? No. Maybe that was a private work wife thing. But these people are out there, right, that I talk to and, you know, that they keep me in check. Right. You know, just like I think at work, you know, my, my current chief, my current deputy chief, he definitely keeps me in check because um, we talk about a lot of things. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. At least I... I feel it, you know, when I got promoted, you know, you're, you're, you're still one of the guys, but you're not, you know, now you're in the officer's union, you're in the, you're an officer, you're a supervisor. So not that I am not friends with the guys that I work with, cause I definitely am, but there's a bit of a difference there. The and you know, my chief, I, I look up to him because as I continue to want to promote, that could be my spot one day. And, you know, I feel like he keeps me in check really well because I can bounce things off of him that he's like, dude, you were acting like an ass out there. <laughs> like, did you see yourself? Did you see yourself speaking wow. to those people? Like, oh, it's New Jersey. We don't pull punches, right? No. And wow. he and I are to a level two where, you know, I, I maybe don't tell him that those words that he told right. me, but I could be like, like, boss. Uh, what, what, what just happened down there, man? Like that? And he's like, he'll be like, I know, or maybe not because he's the boss. But, you know, it's that thing that you, you, you need that accountability. You need that self-discipline. You need that brought in from – there's so many factors to this that we could never cover it. So this is a dichotomy. <laughs> stop. Just that's, stop. That's a new word for me. So, did you hear um, Andy Andy Frizzell? Is that how he says his last name? He's another big podcast guy. Had Jocko on, and he started – Jocko was promoting the book, and he's like – I had to look up dichotomy. I did too. I did too. I did too. <laughs> I'm like, I had to look up dichotomy so when he put the book out. We want to be present, but we don't want to be over present maybe, but maybe we do want to be over present. It, over present turns into overbearing. Oh, and then well, it turns right. into, wait, look at us too. If you become over present in someone else's life, you're running their life. Right. And so what does that do for someone who doesn't try? It just allows them another excuse to be like, oh, well, this person's doing it. Think about a marriage where one partner is more dominant than the other one in the marriage that other partner just kind of you know goes along with it okay 
I'm not that kind of dominant. You know what I'm talking about. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go along with it. And then you see that dominant partner turning into the alpha and right. just that the non-dominant partner just kind of falling yeah. into, yeah. Like, like a bullying situation. Exactly. Just like a bullying situation where they just beat them down, beat right. them down, and it's not going to work. We, we can't do that in a fire service. We can't do that in the gym. We can't do that anywhere. You know, in not-for-profit land where I work sometimes, I see it happening where these big not-for-profits try to push around these little guys, and it's not cool. So then how do we take this topic that we're talking about now of being present and make it, I don't know if the word is omnipresent, but, respon- <laughs> word. but responsibly present? Ooh, wow. Dude, that's, that's two podcasts in a row. We've dropped some knowledge bombs up in this. Responsibly present sounds like a good book title to me. All right, write Somebody write that down. Write Don't down. steal our book idea if you're out there listening. Look, he's typing it in. Responsibly present. And yeah, that is a, a question that I wasn't ready to answer. Let's just <laughs> say because it, it's something that you have to think about, you know, and, and what I look at it is as responsibly present is back to that, you know, don't. Don't think when when Mrs. Pip called me out about being present a few years ago, it wasn't that I wasn't a good dad or that I wasn't yeah, you, spending time with my kids right. or like I was doing all that. I thought I was doing just fine. But what I didn't notice was that I was on this phone too much, was that I was texting away too much where I should have probably been on the floor just rolling around with Declan. Or rolling around you with Finn and Declan at that time. Whip you. It's not good. No, much. them boys, they can both. Finn, <laughs> Finn was learning guillotine chokes the other night in <laughs> uh, in jujitsu class, and uh, R- Ricardo Alameda is uh, his professor. He, he runs a school that he goes, and Ricardo is an amazing dude, surfer, awesome guy. I think he's teaching Finn Spanish too, because he teaches half the class in Spanish, half in English. But he's teaching our kids. There's like I don't know. 20 little people out there and some of them are taller than me but they're still little people <laughs> and uh, he's teaching them about the guillotine guillotine and all the parents are watching and he turns and he's like all your parents man you better be careful because i'm gonna teach these kids this choke and you mess around with them they're just gonna lay you out <laughs> and i was dying but it's one of those things that you know i wasn't being responsibly present right i was present but not responsibly present and it's a, a big thing that that you know we can all do better with and that starts in your firehouse well it starts in your house first but then it moves into the firehouse. And, and I'm going to use an example of our last shift uh, uh, as an example. So I go in and I get bumped up. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm bossing that day. And uh, we get the call and like, hey, you guys are supposed to be at the airport 10 minutes ago for live ARF training. Whoops. Uh, okay. So we wolf down our food. We get up there. Uh, we lead our crew through this ARF thing, blah, 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 blah. We light some fires. We put some things. Get some awesome pictures taken. Thank you, West Virginia National Guard. We go down to the training center. It's like, well, we had an SCBA malfunction. We had to get fixed. Had to fear, fear, fill air cylinders. And I'm like, hey, fellas, gloves and helmets. Let's go. And they're like, what, Ryan? It's like, well, Ryan hasn't touched that 35-footer in a while. The FDNY just had someone fall off of a 35-footer. I mean, it's time to review something that's happened recently. That's a good and, – and when you look at the fire service, it's a very good time to review things because right. it's fresh, you know, because, listen, I, I came from the truck and the rescue – and I worked on it a little bit after I got promoted, but I got bumped back to the engine. Um, and I can't tell you the last time I threw a ground ladder even because we've been doing engine work and we could right. be forced to do that, you know? So it's one of those things that maybe, I guess on Sunday, we're going to throw a ground ladder. There you Sorry, go. Sorry, guys. No. And, and, and as we went through the day and we got to the recruit training at night, which I <laughs> FaceTimed you on, which was freaking pretty awesome. It was cool. I think it was, and what was really cool about the day is we ended up running, making no runs, which don't happen very often. But I'm telling you what, Pip, we were responsibly present all day long. We were responsible for us. We were responsible for them. And I'm telling you, if there was a reason, (laughs) and this is going to sound really dumb, but if there was an aircraft emergency later that night that required us to fight the fire and throw a 35-foot ground line and make access to <laughs> Done. it. Done. We were ready Aces. for it. We Aces. We were ready for it. How, how many times? That's a good, it's a good point, though, because I know this has happened on, on my shift, definitely, where we have trained on something in the morning. It happens later that and night. And sure enough, at 3 a.m., you're like, dude, that was so easy because we just did it again. I don't, whatever right. it is, you're All like, right. oh. So, so let's go with that. So that, that's deal with Ruby being responsibly present. So I get a call from my boy Andrew Arnold the other day. All right, Andrew, if you're listening, honk, honk, woo, comes the number three bus. I'm throwing you under. He's like, Ryan, I want my crew to be better. I'm like, right on, brother. I mean, I'm sure that Chewy is just a phenomenal boss because he's from West Virginia. He works at D.C. What can I say? 
So he's like, we're working on masking up with our gloves on. Righteous. So then we went from working with our, uh, putting our face piece on with our uh, mask or our face piece on with our gloves on to stretching a hose. Then we went from face piece, stretching the hose to stretching the 400. And he said it, it happened. He said it, it just absolutely happened. We got done running the 350. We had a three-story walk up with the work and fire at the kitchen. He said by the time the t- battalion chief got there, fire is out. Yeah, that's it. You just did it. And you're fresh and you're ready to go. Because they were responsibly present. They were fresh out, fresh up, 350 up the stairs, water on the fire. And I think the even I think even mentions the chief was like, we don't even need to, uh, I mean. Don't call an additional alarm. Yeah. It's, it's done. But, but that is a leader in that case being responsibly present. And it's, it doesn't mean, now we have to go to the flip side because we are speaking to firefighters here. There you go. It, it does not mean you walk in at 8 a.m. and training starts at 8.01 and finishes at 20.01 and you're yelling and screaming that dichotomy and dichotomy. <laughs> that's it. But you can't because we. Uh, I follow a lot of folks online, from the top leaders in our industry to right. just the you know super fans. Maybe we call them. We're sure. like you know I, I subscribe to this and I believe in this and I go to every one of this guy's classes and blah 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 blah. blah. And I'm like, dude, that's crazy. Like you, you're crazy. Like take a break. Take breathe every now and again, like Hope breathe. Go, breaks, hero. yeah, yeah, like and where it's like you know, and then you, you watch. I mean, on social media, you see it too, where it's like, oh, I'm not working for a full week, and you're so relaxed, and everything's great. And I'm like, you know, if you just took like a day here and there, right. you'd probably be better off. You know, if you you pump those brakes a little bit, and people think that I show up places and we're gonna work out for nine hours. And I'm like, no. Well, you know, if you my, do it today for nine hours, you're going to be about eight hours and 56 minutes no, by yourself. <laughs> we're just going to do a but little work. I see where you're going with this, Pip. You're going with responsibly present, having an evolution of the revolution, so to speak. Have the plan. Have the, hey, you're not going to go from not being able to throw a 35 to being able to throw a one-person 35, climb up, break the leg. You're going to have to have a progression to the to the suppression for progression. I'm writing that one down, too. Oh, that's really bad. Don't write that one no, down. No, I like suppression that Suppression, progression. But yeah. no, you, you do need to do that, and you need to remember your audience. You know, that's a big deal, too. You could have a, a 23-year veteran and a, a two-year rookie, and maybe both of them haven't thrown a 35-foot extension ladder in a year or two years for that rookie. He did it in the academy and never got back to a truck company. Um, and you need to remember, if we just start with the basics – and build on it, everybody learns and has a good time because that's it. They're being responsibly present. And you train for that hour, and hey, we're done. Let's high five, and that's, you're good. I, I've, we've got to get Rob Owens on the podcast because, I mean, here's a guy who's gone from the average Jake, the average Jake firefighter, the average Jake lieutenant, to the average Jake captain who absolutely gets it because you'll, I mean, and, and now keep in mind, we're talking about the highlight reel here. He's good at highlighting the things, but I think he responsibly highlights. He's like one hour hot, one hour hot, one hour hot. And then it's like 30 minute PT, one hour hot, 30 minute PT. And that's it. Done. Good. All right. I don't, I don't need an eight hour training evolution. Right. You know, I don't need, oh, break, come back. Oh, break. We, we don't need and his that. His one hour time. hots are pretty, pretty doggone good. I mean, he pulls some stuff out because I think he's on an engine now and he'll pull out a technical rescue one hour hot. And I was like, oh, wow. I mean, I've got all the stuff on my little whatever. Caitlin, she has everything on it. So it's like I definitely need to get out the Z-drags and the, and the, the, the lift. I need to be responsibly present for everything. But you can't all do it all at one time. No, for sure. And that, that brings us back to the whole be present and be in that moment. And what I learned for me in that by committing more time to the boys and, and Tracy, by, by being present and now responsibly present, I started doing that more at work, more on the not-for-profit, more on the business side, more on the fitness side. You know, where I'm working out, I'm not answering my phone unless it is Mrs. Pip and there's a problem. Right. You know what I mean? Like I'm present in my workouts. I'm present in what I'm doing. And I know the boys love it even more. You know, like when your kids tell you to put down the phone, the technology, you, you know there's a problem. You know, and... and Listen, sometimes it's going to happen where it's like, boy, daddy's got to take this one. You know what I mean? Or it's work or it's, it's Russ. We talked about my dad in the last podcast we just recorded. But again, that's still being responsible and I'm still there with them. We're not always going to be perfect at this every time. But if we're trying, 
we're, we're going in that right direction for sure. All right, we're going to step aside from the podcast for a minute. we got to step aside to let my main man, Pip, talk about Brute Force Training. Yeah, yeah. Brute Force Training out of Denver, Colorado. Wow, hi! Seriously, American-made products, folks. They make all of their sandbags in America, which is a big deal, especially when you see products that aren't being made in America and people complain about them. But Brute Force is your ultimate one-stop shop for everything ULU involved. When I say ULU, I mean unstable load, odd object training. From sandbags to brute balls to weight vests to kettlebells. You throw some sand in that and you are going to get down on a workout for sure. The object is always moving. It's always unstable because that's what happens with the sand. So each lift, you have to concentrate on that lift and make it happen using proper form. I personally train with them three days a week. Ryan personally trains trains with them maybe once a month, and we're going to try to fix that. But we'd just like to take a minute to thank Brute Force Training for their sponsorship of this podcast and make sure to check them out on Facebook, Instagram under Brute Force Training or on that World Wide Web at www.bruteforcetraining.com. And last but not least, you can download their free free fitness app at Brute Force Training. Free. Go into that app store, hit that download, and check them out. If you're a young jump seat rider out there, there's two things you need to get ready for the CPAP. Plyometric box and a brute force training sandbag. Boom. Brute force sandbags. Train accordingly. I'm being responsibly present with this podcast, but my daughter got her first um, invitation for collegiate swimming. Oh, that's a big deal there. How in the world did they get her name? Because she must be that good. Uh, well, she's not swimming right now. Then she really must be that good. <laughs> I happen to know some athletes out yeah. there that are in high levels of things. And when someone's looking for you like that, there, Mr. Pennington, maybe you better. Maybe it's time to get her back in the pool. Maybe. Because maybe that'll save you some, some coin on the mm. on the flip side. But okay, so now we're totally in a different area but of podcasting. Let's get back. let's get back to the – we're getting ready to wrap it up because we're coming up on 30 minutes. And I think that the title of this podcast is going to be Responsibly Present. We need to give some takeaways. Let's give the takeaways. Let's take let's take it back to the jump seat firefighter that usually listens. I would assume that's our demographic. Chief or Pip, I have no idea if like all chiefs listen. I don't. There's no real real, real way of saying who listens to this podcast. Let's give them some takeaways. Wait, well, here takeaway number one is even if you are a chief, a captain, a lieutenant, a director, and anything in life, you're still a jump seat firefighter. Boom. Plain and simple. Like I I, I would switch. Back, if someone asked me right now, I would do it if I could. If someone was like, "Oh, you want to go? You want to go ride the, the jump seat on on two seven three engine in, in New York?" I'd be gone in a heartbeat. Let's go, boom! You know, so we all that we all are that person, right? So when we talk about being responsibly present, if you think of yourself on day one of the job, day one of your job, you know, day one of your marriage, that's being responsibly present to be that person again that was there that day. Because very few people walk into anything on day one and, <laughs> and not be responsibly present, yeah. <laughs> like, at all. Happy wedding day. I remember who, most of that day. Who the freak is that woman here? Let me go talk to somebody else. I have a video. It reminds me. Oh, oh. You remember day one uh, at the firehouse? Oh. Remember day one? Of the, day one for me, so going back a few years, 10s and 14s, started on a 14-hour night. Nice. So, and I got hired with, with, uh, or I started on my shift with someone else, one of my good buddies, Teddy. Um, and I remember sitting in our DC's office and it was the DC, the engine captain and the truck lieutenant sat us down and basically told us for the next 20 or 30 minutes what they wanted. (laughs) And I'm not going to repeat that whole conversation, but you know, they prepared us for what was going to happen. Uh, we made dinner. And our first alarm didn't happen till like 11.30 at night. Nice. Was not asleep. <laughs> yeah. Was not asleep by 11.30 at My night. My first shift in Charleston, uh, I rode, we were doing 12s and 12s on the ambulance there. And I'm pretty sure, I don't remember, I think I rode nighttime. So I rode nighttime box, daytime engine. Wasn't that scary though, starting at night? I was very scared starting at I night. I was really fortunate, Pip, because I, I transferred departments three times. So I really wasn't. Going into Charleston, I was ready. I mean, I was already a, 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 
four-year apprenticeship firefighter and the guys I knew I mean they treated me with nothing but respect that's awesome yeah well not only that but I'd like to think that I earned it because that night we were we were fighting a fire that night I wasn't I had a patient in the ambulance but they were <laughs> so but I'm I mean glad, I'm glad he hated that part <laughs> yeah yeah I wasn't I wasn't the, the story ambulance. always sounds better the yeah. other way but you know, yeah truth yeah but it's it's being responsibly present in your life with your wife with your husband with your kids I noticed since the counseling that I've been more responsibly present with my daughter, which a 14-year-old girl and a 44-year-old man usually don't have fine common ground that often, but we found common ground. But you can if you if work in responsibly it. responsibly present. Last night, I mean, her, and the thing about it is, is my wife actually said it the other day, and I was coming home, and the volunteer pager went off, and I was going to run right up on this crash. I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be first on scene, first on scene. And I called Allison. I said, hey, I'm going to be a little bit late. Are you okay to get out to school? She's like, yeah, I'm cool, Dad. Thanks. When I told my wife that, she's like, you called and checked on Allison? Yeah. She's like, well, you wouldn't have done that six months ago because you weren't present. Yeah. You didn't even, like, and you didn't even think about that. No. Right? Because I'm being responsibly present to my daughter, who's pretty much self-sufficient now. And it's just when you step through the doors of the firehouse, become responsibly present for your day. If you're a jump seat firefighter, Go touch something you haven't touched in a while. Go touch the rope. Not rope. another person. Yeah. Yeah. Go, don't, don't, don't touch do that person. Yeah. Right. I, I like that though, too, for even me, you know, the other day, I don't know if I told the story on a podcast we did or not, cause I told it a few times, but we had to put the engine in pump. Oh, I was the closest guy to the driver's seat. Not at a fire, just you didn't training. Go, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, let me jump up there. And I jumped up and I looked at everything and then I stopped for a second and I was like, Oh, <laughs> hmm. It's been about four years, oh, four wow. years since I put an engine and pump and I wasn't not, I never really liked driving, but I could drive everything. I so it. I had to do it. I do it. But, um, so then my guys, cause they're awesome, started laughing at me cause they realized like from the expression on my face <laughs> and then they came over and I'm like, don't, don't you say a word. <laughs> don't anyone say a word. They were being responsibly <laughs> they, you know, they were, cause they wanted to pick on me. Right. And I mean, I did it, but it's one of those things that, you know, when you get promoted, you don't, they don't do that anymore. I right. mean, I, there's, there's two rigs in my department that I've never driven. Really? Our new ladder truck, I've only ridden on it two times, much less right. thought about driving it. You know, there's cameras in it now. Like, I've, cameras, what are these things? Are these but so selfies? It's one of those things that, yeah, be responsibly present. You know, maybe I should take the ladder out in a parking lot. I should not take the ladder around the block. Around. I should not take the ladder <laughs> around the block. But, you know, those things that you should, you know, play with your, your radio. You know, we got these new radios this year with all these different channels on them and all this stuff. And... I got to play with that thing every now and again, just to be like, what does this do? What does right. this button do? Cause there's like, we went from having uh one operational channel to having 10. Yeah. And the on off button and a couple Ooh. clicks to now have and, and a mayday button to now having, you have to, you can control everything on the speaker mic. There's different right. zones. There's different ways to lock out a zone. There's, and uh, you got to go over it, you know? So that's, that's a good way. And I would, I would encourage them not only to be responsibly present with the stuff that you're, I mean, anybody can be in your comfort zone. I mean, you can be a great engine boss, but all of a sudden you're detailed over the ladder. So, I mean, choose something that you're not good at. Do, do you mean firefighters are not good at some things? No. I can tell you, my, I can give, give my list. I mean, somebody <laughs> asked me one day, he says, Ryan, what, is, what qualifies you to be an, an international speaker? I was like, well, I screw up more than you do. And I usually have a video camera around that's capturing the moment. I, so. I, I like to say I, I submitted to teach the class. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pip. This was another great one. We're here in New Jersey. Uh, there's definitely a beautiful neighborhood. You're getting ready to crush my soul. We're going to run 400 meters in it shortly oh. with a sandbag on our back. With the, uh, so if uh, the, the emergency contact, her name is Heather. Her number <laughs> is. Uh, Dude, I used to be a paramedic. No, oh, there you go. All right. Thanks for coming on once again with my co-host. Uh, we're drinking out of our, we're our brute, force, brute force shaker bottles here. We got everything up. Make sure, where can everybody find you when you're being? Uh, when I'm being social, when I'm being not responsibly <laughs> present, because <laughs> I'm updating social media. Responsibly <laughs> present. You can find me on the Instagram at, at 555pip. You can find me on the book of face at Robert Paparo. Uh, there are two of us, by the way. Is there really? Make sure you pick the one with the mohawk. 
Who? Because the other one is a firefighter paramedic in Saratoga Springs, New York, no who way. happens to be married to a, a PA, just like I'm married to a PA. We both enjoy 90s, late 90s punk rock and ska music as well. Talk about scary. So shout out to Robert Paparo, Saratoga Springs Fire Department. Oh, and one more thing. He's short and they pick on him about it. Scary. So shout out to my homie up there. So don't find him. Find me with the Mohawk or even better yet, find him. And tell him what's up, because that's how he found me. He got tired of people asking him if he was me. <laughs> you could also check out 555 Fitness on Instagram, Facebook, 555fitness.org. And then my homies over there at Brute Force Training. Make sure to check us out, too. Brute Force Training on IG, Facebook, or Brute Force Tactical. That's our new channel. Ooh. For everything you need to be tactical, you can check us out there. And that's it for another episode of Jump Seat Radio. I will leave you with this. I'm in the, uh, the World According to Pip office, and this is something that I think is a fitting closing to this year's podcast for being responsibly accountable. Running your mouth, jumping to conclusions, and pushing your luck are not exercise. Mic drop. You've been listening to Jump Seat Radio Podcast. Make sure to follow along on Twitter at Jump Seat Views, Facebook.com forward slash Views from the Jump Seat, Instagram at Jump Seat Views. And remember, the next time that you show up to the firehouse, that you are jump seat ready. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next week.